Okay, hello everyone. Good evening. My name is Franklin. I'm one of the two co-founders of NorCal SCI, also known as Northern California Spinal Cord Injury Foundation. Welcome to tonight's presentation. Sorry about the slight delay, uh, but uh, we are ready to get moving. Um, so tonight's presentation is on carbohydrates, whole grains, and spinal cord injuries, and I'm very thrilled to have Shelley Wood, our registered dietitian nutritionist extraordinaire with us once again. Uh, so a couple of housekeeping items that I just want to get through. Uh, everyone has been muted. Uh, that way we can eliminate any background distractions. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the chat feature on your screen to forward any questions to me. And uh, I will be uh, asking Shelly at the end of our presentation during our Q&A session all your questions. Uh, the second thing is that we are recording tonight's presentation. So if at any time you feel the need to jump off the call uh, for any reason, no worries. Uh, we'll be sending a recorded version of the presentation to everyone who has registered by this weekend, so you'll be able to enjoy it. And then finally, um, all of these presentations uh, are uh, brought to you and us uh, thanks to a grant that we received from the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. So we're grateful to them for their generosity. So without further ado, let me kind of jump into it and uh, introduce Shelley. Uh, she's a lifelong advocate of nutrition, and when she's in working uh, with her patients, she can be found at her in her greenhouse or kitchen. Uh, she obtained her BS in nutritional science from San Jose State University, my alma mater, in 2012, and has been working at Santa Clara Valley Medical Center uh, at the, one of the top spinal cord injury rehab hospitals in the U.S. since 2013. Uh, she currently works at the outpatient clinic uh, of the hospital, seeing primarily patients with uh, spinal cord injuries. Shelley uh, continued her education while honing her clinical skills and obtained her master's in public health in 2016 from the University of New England, where she completed her thesis on diet education for chronic disease prevention in the setting of spinal cord injury. She's also the chair of uh, Dietitians on Medical Nutrition Therapy for Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, an advisory board member of NorCal SCI, and a guest lecturer at San Jose State University. So I'm very pleased to uh, bring back once again, Shelly, take it away. Hi everyone, um, nice to be back and I'm excited to talk more about nutrition with you. Um, Maria, I see you're in your kitchen. I hope you're uh, cooking some whole grains. <laughs> um, so we are, um, we were experiencing a little bit of technical difficulty and um, I'm going to shrink my screen real quick so that way I can see what I'm looking at here. Okay, so um, we're talking about carbs and whole grains right now and um, this is kind of a, a topic that is um, difficult and a lot of people think that carbohydrates are evil and, and, um, and unnecessary in some cases, but they are very necessary for health. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly the carbohydrates are um, with your health, uh, you know, in relation to health. And then we'll talk about how our body processes carbohydrates. Um, there are different kinds of carbohydrates, so com complex and simple. You may not know about that. We'll talk about whole grains and um, them as an energy source and how our body uses carbohydrates in uh, digestion and the vitamins and minerals that are in whole grains specifically. Then we'll talk about sources and how to tell if, if uh, something is whole grain. I'm um, gonna talk a little bit about gluten here because gluten's been uh, kind of a key word. Um, then we'll take a review. If you've been watching my videos, you will you know that I'm a big fan of looking at caloric density versus weight loss because weight is, uh, is a huge issue in the spinal cord population. And so that is something that needs to be taken very seriously. And then we'll go through some questions. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay, and I want to say before we get started that um, a lot of the information that I present to you can be pretty technical. Um, the reason why I break these things down the way that I do is because I want you to be as informed as possible and I want you to be able to make better decisions for yourself and without knowing um, this information, then it's hard for you to make informed decisions. Uh, knowing more about food is going to help you get more invested in eating healthfully. 
Um, and this information, a lot of what I talk about is applicable to everybody, to all bodies, not just those with spinal cord injuries, um, but there are specific things that do um, have to do with spinal cord injury, um, nutrition wise, and I'll definitely be sharing those. Um, if you have diabetes, then you're going to need to work with a dietitian to um, work on spreading your carbohydrates throughout the day, especially if you have a hard time controlling your blood sugar. So in looking at the sources, um, this is a list of whole grain sources. I wanted to add this to my presentation. Some of these might look really strange to you. Um, some of them quite odd, like buckwheat and bulgur. Um, but what I encourage you to do is to try these things, um, not just once, but try them twice. Uh, oftentimes people um, might have a disaster in the kitchen with say bulgur and decide that bulgur is not for you, uh, but try cooking things a different way, different method, different sauce, different style. Um, our Ash is going to go over some of these grains actually in his presentation. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with some of these whole grains. So give them a try uh, at least a couple of times. Uh, usually people try something once they just give it up. Um, but just uh, just try it different ways and learn as much as you can about these whole grains. So I'm going to start off with uh, the heavy stuff first, and we're going to talk a little bit about the research um, pertaining to cardiovascular disease. And again, and I've talked about this before, um, those who have spinal cord injuries have four times greater risk for heart failure and then uh, over five and a half times greater risk for stroke than those without a spinal cord injury. So cardiovascular disease is where a lot of my work lies with, um, with a population and trying to prevent these things. And uh, much of this, this research is actually linked to fiber. So there were three studies that I wanted to share real quick with you. Um, one study actually was called a meta-analysis where the uh, researchers look at many studies and they looked at 31 studies and found that those who consumed the highest amounts of fiber significantly reduced their uh, incidence of mortality or death from heart disease. Um, the reduction uh, in total in serum LDL cholesterol was pretty significant, and this is linked to whole grains and fiber intake specifically. Um, there was another study, um, a big study over 19 years. This is a lo longitudinal study where they look at research over a long period of time and found that the higher the fiber intake, particularly soluble fiber, the reduced risk for coronary heart disease. Um, so that was the second study. And these are all pretty recent studies. I look at most of the current research because it's coming out every day. Um, and the last one was a dose response, basically how much you give someone and what the response is. And this shows that adequate fiber intake that was given to the participants significantly reduced coronary heart disease by eight to 14% and death by 23 to 30%. So significantly reduced cardiovascular disease um, with whole grains, specifically the fiber that's in them. Diabetes, um, this is another area of research. Um, in the research that they talk about whole grains, they're looking at overweight and obesity, specifically um, glucose intolerance, um, which is how, how well your body handles blood, your blood sugar, um, high blood sugar after meals and, and insulin resistance. And many, many studies, I couldn't even list them all here, but multiple studies suggest that a higher intake of whole grains is associated with a lower risk of type two diabetes, as well as lowering risk factors like being overweight and or obese, um, glucose intolerance, and then after postprandial um, hyperinsulinium, insulinemia, where your blood sugar spikes up after you eat. So these participants, eight whole grains, high fiber, and the, the blood sugar uh, goes up slowly compared to eating white rice or white bread, that kind of thing. So good research in diabetes. In cancer, multiple studies suggest increasing whole grain consumptions linked with reduced risk for many cancers, including breast, um, digestive. Digestive cancers include colorectal, gastric, esophagus, um, reduced lung cancer, bladder, pancreatic cancer, adenocarcinoma cancers, all of those. So all of them are linked with increased um, whole grain consumption. And then the last research that I found recently is on digestive health. And that involves, again, fiber seems to be the key word here and gluten. So fiber and whole grains helps prevent constipation, 
um, and constipation. Uh, if you know anything about um, diverticulitis or diverticulosis, um, that's a small intestine, um, the pressure on the, on the intestines and, uh, and an issue that you would have with the small intestine and the fiber helped prevent constipation and help these people that had um, diverticular disease. Um, another uh, study talked about some grains containing um, the naturally occurring protein, which I'll talk about called gluten. Um, in some people with celiac, which is an autoimmune disorder, um, the, the fiber actually helped uh, um, alleviate some of these symptoms. And then another thing I wanna mention is the negative media attention. Gl gluten has become kind of like the enemy in the media. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but there really isn't any uh, published evidence that supports claims that gluten has adverse effects on those that don't have celiac. So if you don't have celiac, gluten is not uh, an end-all. I mean, you don't have to avoid gluten, but I'm going to talk more about gluten later. Okay, so the research part is over. Uh, what is a carbohydrate? So most people, when I ask them, what is a carbohydrate? They say um, sugar, you know, it's... Um, bread and bananas and oranges and pasta and that kind of thing. Um, but we'll break it down a little bit more. Um, so carbohydrates um, are one of the three macronutrients. I have already talked pretty extensively about protein. I'm going to talk more about fat. Carbohydrates are the third macronutrient and they have four calories per gram. Um, carbs are naturally occurring sugars, starches and fiber in our food. Um, all carbohydrates are made from sugar molecules, which are linked to form starches and fiber. If you can see the, I love, I'm such a science nerd, but this is a, um, the symbol, this, the, the chemical symbol for sucrose, which is table sugar. Um, that's what sugar looks like. So basically carbohydrates are uh, these, uh, these sugar molecules linked together to form starches and fiber. And what does the body do with these carbohydrates? So starches and sugar are broken down by our digestive system to glucose. Um, glucose is basically our primary fuel. This is our gasoline. Without gasoline or energy, a car won't run. And so we need glucose um, in order to function. We use it for all of our body's functions. Um, another name for glucose is blood sugar. Uh, the fiber that's not broken down during digestion uh, will pass through the stomach, the small intestine, the colon, which is the large intestine, then out of the body. Um, but we basically use all of the sugar in our carbohydrates, except for the fiber for energy. And then um, there's different kinds of carbs. So I don't like to use the word good and bad carb. Okay, so some carbs are much healthier than others. And those are the carbs that people call good carbs. Um, but really, carbohydrates are broken down as complex and simple. Complex carbs are starches, fiber, and whole grain foods. Simple carbs are sugar that naturally occurs in fruits, vegetables, and milk. See, the things that people call bad carbs are actually not bad at all. So when you're looking at simple carbs, um, they are carbs that are found in fruit, which is amazing, um, vegetables and milk. Uh, simple carbs are also brown sugar, white sugar, honey, and then um, all of the processed foods, white, white flour, breads, cakes, honeys, um, uh, cookies, bakery food, white rice, some cereals. And, and then these foods, the simple carbs are usually enriched. And I'll talk more about enrichment in a minute. So what's a whole grain? Um, basically, a grain is whole when it has three of its original parts. Um, the bran, which is the outer layer. Um, you can Google whole grain and take a look at it. It looks like a little seed. Um, the outer layer of the seed is the bran and it has all the antioxidants, B vitamins and fiber in it. The germ, which is the next layer, is the embryo that can sprout into a new plant. So these really are basically seeds. Um, this has B vitamins, uh, some protein, minerals and healthy fat. And then you have the tiny, the food supply on the very inside of uh, the grain, which is called the endosperm. And this is the germs food supply and it gives energy to the plant. Um, it's the largest part of a kernel and this contains starchy carbs, proteins, and some vitamins and minerals. And all of these components help you with slowing the breakdown of starch into glucose, which steadies your blood sugar. Um, these components help lower cholesterol and move waste through your GI tract. 
Um, they help prevent formation of blood clots, which can lead to heart attack or stroke. Um, and then they also contain phytochemicals and other essential minerals, which can protect against some forms of cancer. And I just talked about all of these things in the research, and this is why the whole grain is so important. And breaking it down further, so yes, whole grains have protein. It's awesome. And you know what, Arash is gonna talk a little bit about that too, and he did in his last presentation, he talked about quinoa, quinoa is a seed, but um, Whole grains have protein, not as much as you would think, like maybe beans or tofu or that kind of thing, or eggs, but, but yes, whole grains have protein and that protein adds to your daily um, intake of protein. So the whole grain has protein um, and the protein in the whole grains helps form the complete amino acids that you need when you combine them with other sources of protein. And in my protein talk, I talked about how there's all these amino acids, some are essential, not, some are non-essential. Um, and basically people that follow a plant-based diet shouldn't have any problem meeting all of these essential um, amino acids because they have such a wide variety of food in their diet and the protein from whole grains counts toward this. Um, the B vitamins in whole grains include um, uh, thiamine, which is vitamin B1, which helps your, you with energy metabolism and growth development and function of your cells. Um, riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, is a big component in energy production, cellular function, and metabolism. Niacin, the, the B3 vitamin, has over 400 different enzymes used to transfer energy from carbs, fats, and protein to what's called ATP. I don't know if you remember Back in high school, you studied ATP, which is our cell's primary energy currency um, in our bodies. We, uh, we use ATP, it's, it's the flux capacitor of your body, basically, if you're a fan of Back to the Future. So niacin plays a huge part in that flux capacitor. Um, and then folate. Folate's used to make DNA and other genetic materials. It, it's required for cell division. And uh, if you're deficient in folate, this is what's called megaloblastic anemia. So folate is involved, uh, whole, whole grains have that, and that is needed, especially if you have a history of anemia. Minerals, um, multiple minerals, and these aren't just the only minerals. Um, there's probably many, many more, but these are the, the minerals and whole grains in the highest quantity. Iron is a big one. Um, iron helps our body carry and store oxygen as well as do other things. Magnesium is used for hundreds of biochemical reactions, nerve impulses, converting food to energy, body temperature regulation, uh, maintaining your immune function, absorbing calcium, it goes on and on. Magnesium is very important. Um, selenium, which helps prevent cellular damage from free radicals, helps regulate your thyroid, um, helps maintain a healthy immune system. Uh, phosphorus, which is in every cell of your body, makes up 1% of your actual body weight, um, mainly forms bones and teeth, but it's also responsible for repairing your cells and, and gr growth and maintenance. Um, phosphorus also helps regulate your heartbeat and, and has something to do with nerve conduction. Um, zinc, which you might have heard of before if you had a wound, helps your immune system fight off bacteria and viruses, uh, helps with skin repair. Zinc is responsible for making proteins and DNA, and it's also responsible for taste and smell, too. Um, if you've ever been through cancer therapy, chemotherapy, um, and you've lost your sense of taste, uh, sometimes you get a zinc supplement to help you um, um, bring your taste back. Um, and then copper. Uh, copper is needed for absorption of iron, so the two work together. It also helps regulate blood pressure and heart rate, and it's needed for the production of melanin for your hair and your skin color. And last one, manganese. Helps us handle oxidative stress, just basic um, everyday environmental stress. Um, manganese activates enzymes. It, it helps metabolize carbohydrates and amino acids and cholesterol and helps your body form healthy cartilage and bone. So whole grains, if you're not sold yet, I'll keep going. So here we go. So refined grains are missing one or more parts of the whole grain. So I said that there's three parts in a whole grain. Refined are missing at least one part of that. Um, and an example of a refined grain would be white flour or whole wheat flour. Um, as mentioned before, um, 
refined is missing. It's missing a part. And I want to tell you some history. So in the late 1800s, there were some major nutritional deficiencies which happened. Um, I don't remember which ones they were, but there were quite a few of them. And they realized that because they had been tampering with whole grains, um, it led to these this malnutrition and these deficiencies. And so they started enriching the these refined grains and putting nutrients back in to them. So it's really absurd that, that you would want to continue to eat refined foods if uh, if you have to add things back to make them complete. Why not just eat the thing the way it's supposed to be? And the next slide um, is just kind of an example of uh, whole wheat flour. Um, so whole wheat flour is the green. So this has 100% of all these nutrients that are listed on the left. Uh, refined would be like kind of, um, you know, almost like white flour, refined wheat flour, where it's it's um, it's broken down and things are taken away. And then you see that in the red, they, they contain much less. And then when you go and you enrich them, and you throw these vitamins and minerals back in, sometimes you completely overshoot. Sometimes that's okay, but a lot of the time it's not safe. And so a lot of these enriched uh, foods that you see that have all these vitamins added back in, they're 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 way way too much in some cases. I just want to show you that graph. So the takeaway message about this is it's the source that matters. Um, going for high quality sources of carbohydrates that have already the essential minerals and vitamins and nutrients that our body needs is important. Um, high quality carbs have fiber, which uh, we know slows the digestion of sugar and starches. It prevents large spikes in blood sugar and insulin, which is associated with diabetes, heart disease, and weight gain. And we need carbs. I can't stress enough that we need carbohydrates. And the, this, uh, this keto stuff that's in the news, um, we, we need to not vilify carbohydrates because we need the nutrients that they give us, um, especially in whole grains. So how can you tell if, um, if it's whole grain? So it's really confusing because um, advertising is, um, I don't know, the, the Food and Drug Administration is not, not really that good at regulating the industry, the food industry, and so it's really confusing. Um, you may think that going to the store and picking up some brown bread means you're getting whole wheat bread, but that's not true. So because there is no standard legal definition of whole grain from the USDA, except for whole wheat. So if it says whole wheat, that, that's a standardized legal definition. And you, you can know that if it says whole wheat, that it will have its whole grain and that all three parts are in there. If the label says whole wheat, it has to have 100% whole wheat with no refined flour added to it. So wheat bread, wheat flour, and 100% wheat mean nothing at all. Um, all white flour is technically, um, it's technically, I mean, you know, it's made from wheat, but, but people that say wheat bread, on the label, it, it's not whole grain. Um, that That's misleading and confusing. Another thing is um, a lot of, I'm talking about bread because most people think of bread when you think of carbs, but um, molasses is added to the ingredients on the food label to turn the bread brown, um, which is even further misleading. So you wanna look for um, whole grain on the label because if it says whole grain, then it's a legal definition and by law, Food labels need to list all ingredients in order by weight. So when you look at the ingredients list, the very first ingredient on the ingredient list means that that, that food is made up the most of that. And, it, and then they kind of like go down from there. Um, so basically you want to look for the first ingredient and you want it to say whole grain. Um, or if you're buying brown rice, you want it to say brown rice or something like that. Um, white flour is basically anything that says enriched wheat flour or wheat flour would be white flour. Whole wheat will have whole grain as an ingredient. And I have some examples here. So on the left, um, your Sara Lee white bread. And on the right is or wheat whole wheat bread, which is also whole grain. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. And so I'll just walk you through it. So it says one slice for the serving size. Um, the carbohydrates are roughly the same. The carbohydrates on the Sarah, Sarah, um, Sarah Lee is, um, let's see, 14 grams, and it's 19 on the or wheat, whole wheat. Um, there's protein, a little bit of protein in the Sarah Lee. 
um, there's double the protein in the whole wheat. Um, I think that's all, oh, the fiber, yes, zero fiber in Sara Lee white bread. Okay, that's a good indicator right there that there, there's uh, something missing. There should be a fiber. If you have a whole, whole grain food, there should be fiber in it. Um, there's four grams of fiber in the Aura wheat, whole wheat bread on the right. So just note, the actually the fiber would be your best indicator. Take a look at the fiber on the label. If there's no fiber, then it's pretty refined. And then on the next slide, you can see the Sara Lee is on the left. Um, on the ingredients list, the very first ingredient says enriched wheat flour. That's not whole grain. Um, on the right, there's a double fiber whole wheat bread. It says whole, whole wheat flour on the right. And then another thing I wanna point out is they put molasses in um, both breads to make them brown. So uh, molasses could be in a whole grain bread, but um, um, it's to make it browner. <laughs> so I guess the browner, the healthier they think. So um, the next slide is, is again, the whole grain sources, and this is a repeat. So these are the main whole grain sources that I think of when I think of whole grains. And so if you were to like pick something off of this list and try it, um, and then try it again. If you didn't like it, try cooking it a different way. Look for in, um, recipes that have these in there. That will help you increase your whole grain. And then we'll talk about gluten real quick. So what's gluten? Um, gluten is a protein that's found in wheat, rye, and barley, and um, triticale, which is a cross between rye and wheat. Um, these uh, proteins that are found, they help food hold their shape. I guess you could think of gluten as glue. Um, where can it be found? So you can find gluten in pretty much everything. Um, honestly, if you have celiacs and you're listening to this, you know that it's everywhere. Um, bread, baked goods, soup, pasta, cereal, sauce, everything. Um, it's used as a binder in, in sauces. It's used as a thickener. So if you are truly struggling with a gluten issue, um, then you're gonna have a hard time. But you know, now it's, it's a little easier, but it, who should worry even about gluten? I would say only those that have celiac, diagnosed celiac. Um, Anyone who has non-celiac gluten intolerance that's diagnosed or gluten intolerance or a wheat allergy or something like that. But I would make sure that you have a diagnosis before you try to start going gluten-free. Because you cut out a lot of really good foods when, when you try to do that. And then the next slide is a repeat, which I will keep repeating probably for the rest of my life. I, uh, I'm, I want you to know that certain foods have less calories and um, you can eat more fruits and veggies and grains. Here's the whole grains right here in the brown. So you can eat a lot more of those for the calories. And this is 500 calories here. So if you haven't seen this before, it's pretty interesting. You can fill your stomach with fruits and veggies, uh, grains and beans right there on the right and, and get a ton of nutrition and be nice and full. And the next slide is another repeat. Um, so again, the fat on the far right and grains are here, they're unprocessed complex carbs are here, um, right there in the third one over from the left. And so it's in the green and, and they're um, super healthy and you should be including them in your diet. And then the next slide is another repeat. Um, this one's hard to read. So I put the website on there. You should check out this more in detail and read. It's really interesting to look at um, and, and think about. So if you primarily keep your, um, your diet on the left in the green and eat from these foods and a wide variety of them, your, your health will improve. And the next one, so there's room for other foods. And if you make the majority of your foods plant-based for health, um, it's easier for weight loss if that's what you need to do or maintain. So I, I like to tell people to aim for 90% plant-based and that would include whole grain foods. Um, focus your attention on eating those whole grains rather than the refined and processed. Um, try, to, try to eliminate as much of those as you can and, and swap them over for whole grain varieties. Um, and nutrition should be fun. It's not about what you eat during one meal, remember, but it's the whole picture of your diet quality over a period of time that has the biggest impact. So um, think of it like that instead of, uh, you know, I had 
fairly white bread for lunch one day and like, a, you know, now my health is terrible, but no, it's, it's more, it's more a variety of, of your food over a period of time that really makes the biggest impact in your health. And the next time um, I do a session, I'm going to continue carbohydrates. I wanna talk about the fiber really in detail then and uh, bring in the vegetables because um, veggies also are carbohydrates because um, carbs include whole grains and vegetables and fruit. So we're gonna be talking more about carbohydrates over the next few sessions actually. And I'll just continue talking about them for a while. And that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Shelly. Um, all right, everyone, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to use the chat uh, feature on your screen to fire off uh, those questions. So um, I have one question uh, that's already been posed. Uh, this person says, I seem to have a need to take a lot of uh, uh, vitamins from zinc, B12, this and that. Uh, where should I draw the line and how can I uh, meet all of those requirements by sort of eating sort of healthy food? Okay, so I, I plan to talk more about supplements, but in order to answer your question, um, I'm a big fan of food first, always. Um, if you are eating from the left side of the graph and eating 90% plants and mixing them up in a wide variety, you shouldn't need to take a lot of supplements. Um, I don't know who is having you take a lot of supplements, but First of all, I need you to make sure that you're not taking a lot of fat soluble vitamins because those are the ones, um, vitamin A, D, E, and K build up in your fat stores and they can become toxic. Um, the B vitamins and, and other vitamins that I talked about, um, they are water soluble vitamins and usually your body uses what it needs and then you just pee the rest of it out. Um, but you shouldn't have to be taking a lot of supplements if you're doing a wide variety of uh, foods, if you're like most people and you have the same go-to meals over and over and over, and I know I'm one of them, um, then just a daily multivitamin might get you through and just get your vitamin D checked because everybody's deficient. But um, that, and zinc actually can become pr a problem. I really only like to prescribe zinc to my patients for about three weeks and that's it because zinc can um, do some pretty nasty things to your stomach, so. Uh, you might want to talk to your doctor about your need, or specifically a dietitian would be good, um, about your need for taking a lot of vitamins and minerals um, if you really don't need them. They're not necessary and they're expensive too. So um, sort of add, taking added zinc is not necessarily a good thing for, let's say, skin management or sort of maintaining a healthier skin? No, no. Again, I only recommend zinc um, for about three weeks or so. Um, if you're really worried about your zinc, zinc deficiencies are really rare in the United States. I would think that uh, you probably are not deficient. In fact, zinc actually competes with copper. And so you can, you can have a copper deficiency and copper deficiencies are horrible and sometimes permanent. So I wouldn't be popping zinc if I were you. Okay. All right, next question. I'm wondering if caloric intake should be considered for muscle building and or weight loss. That's a, that's a two part question. <laughs> um, so yes, you, if you're not getting, getting enough calories, then you'll lose weight and you will lose muscle mass. Um, if you're trying to build muscle, getting enough calories for your activity and enough protein, which you can do with plants, um, is important. And um, if you want a diet plan, maybe see a dietitian about that. But there are two different things. If you're not eating enough in general, you, you're going to lose muscle um, and fat as well. And then same person says, how many calories uh, does it depend on? How many calories and does it depend on age or height or activity? All of those. All of those. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's no one number. And you know what, just you, you just start eating from the left side, eat a ton of plants, um, mix it up, see what happens. Um, generally, if, if weight is an issue for you um, and you're trying to lose weight, um, eating those plant-based foods on the left, that's gonna, that's gonna get you down to a healthy weight naturally. Um, if you're trying to gain, then, then um, I know I've mentioned before, um, listen to my weight uh, maintenance or weight management presentation, but adding healthy fat, if you're trying to weight, gain weight and that kind of thing. Hopefully I answered your question. Okay, um, this next question. So you mean to tell me that all these messages about cutting carbs reduces weight are sort of worthless basically? 
any any food that you eat a ton of is going to contribute to weight gain honestly carbs are not the enemy you 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 know you can gain weight from eating too much protein you can gain weight you will gain weight from eating too much fat carbs are not the enemy and yes all the messages are misleading everybody <laughs> Uh, Shelly, you and I had talked about the sort of the job that the supplement companies have done with their marketing messages that, uh, you know, you need this, you need that. Uh, do, you, do you want to sort of share some of your thoughts about that whole kind of scheme of these companies and what they're doing with their messaging? So this is a, this is, I think this is an American thing. I'm not sure, but like this whole, like, um, pop a pill and it'll fix you, you know, or like just the quick drive through, you know, like this meal is quick, that's quick, like in an instant, like there's no, when it comes to nutrition and health and healthy eating, there is no pill, there is no quick fix, there is no supplement that's going to like do it for you. It, uh, it takes investment, you have to, you have to think about, you know, what your goals are like, do you want to avoid having heart disease? Does diabetes run in your family? Then your chances are higher. It takes hard work and um, supplements are not the answer unless you have a deficiency, then, uh, then, then they're just, you're just wasting your money. Okay. It's hard work, good food. You just need to eat good, good food, um, eat well, mix it up, get fresh air, uh, whatever exercise that you, you can do. Um, and that, that is it. And it's hard and it's not easy, but if you get going and you start to feel better, then the ball rolls downhill and it becomes easy and worth it. Okay. All right. Next question. And I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this. Uh, what are your thoughts about Ezekiel bread? E-Z-E-K-I-A-L? It's I don't think about it. It's a whole grain bread. I mean, most of it, unless unless there's a bunch of um, junk in the Ezekiel, but most Ezekiel breads that I've seen are pretty good. They're very hearty. Um, yeah, enjoy it. Okay. Um, I have an eight-year-old daughter. How would uh, everything that you talked about today would apply to a, a youngster versus an adult? I okay, so I want adults to eat as mixed uh, mixed variety as possible and enjoy all the foods. I think for kids specifically, um, I think it's important to expose them to as many different foods as possible. Um, try this, try this, try this, try this, you know, get them involved, like cook with them and you know go to the farmers market. Um, introduce them to the weed, like have them pick a weird fruit or something they've never seen, like star fruit or something weird like that, you know do that. I think that is the best thing for them. And that way, when they get older, they're like, oh, I've had that, I've had that, you know, and they have a wide variety and it's the same as music. Have them listen to every kind of music. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. What should vegans be concerned about? Okay. So vegans should be concerned about vitamin B12. So if you don't eat egg, or dairy or any kind of animal product, then you do need to take a B12 supplement because that, um, that is something that um, you would get from the animals that eat, it's like a bacteria out of the ground. And so you get it from eating the animal that actually has the bacteria. So you need to take it. Um, pretty much that's it. Vegans are pretty healthy as long as the diet is a wide, a wide variety, mix it up, different colors, different kinds of foods. Um, generally, vegans are healthier than other people <laughs> as long as they do that. All right. And the same person is asking, should B12 be consumed in a spray or a tablet? Uh, I, the one that I know of is the sublingual. Um, and then get your B12 checked. Another thing is if you are vegan, you wanna get your vitamin B12, but you also wanna get what's called methylmalonic acid. Those two labs, B12 and methylmalonic acid, you wanna get them together because um, some B12 labs are not accurate and they can lead you to think that you're not deficient. Um, but B12, uh, methylmalonic acid needs B12. And if you're deficient in B12, that they call it MMA builds up. And so if you have elevated MMA, that means you're probably B12 deficient. So yeah, so get so those Shelf, two checked. Yeah, so how often do you think someone with a spinal cord injury should have sort of their um, blood tested, you know, for you know, basically a full range of all the tests to indicate? Um, I, recommend, I recommend everyone, not just spinal cord injury, get their vitamin D checked um, probably six, months, every six months, if possible, at least once a year. Um, specifically for spinal cord, I think a fasting lipid panel with cholesterol, triglycerides, and 
HDL, LDL, all of those fasted, fasting lipid um, would be really good. And then if you have diabetes, I would recommend getting a hemoglobin A1C to see, make sure that you don't have a lot of sugar floating around in your blood. But um, the fasting lipid panel um, will give you a good baseline because again, the, the, they are super at risk for heart disease, um, cardiovascular issues. And so having your blood uh, lipids checked once a year would be really helpful. And, and then you can compare um, your results over, you know, over the years. Okay. You've seen a lot of uh, individuals with spinal cord injury over the years. What are the typical uh, sort of areas where there are deficiencies that, sh that you've experienced? I won't lie. Number one, vitamin D. <laughs> you know, um, I see a lot of people indoors not just those with spinal cord, but, but, you know, especially spinal cord and find, find them in their house a lot. Uh, don't, don't go outside a whole lot. And, uh, the vitamin D deficiency is super common, um, working in inpatient that that is such a common thing that they just order the vitamin D automatically upon admission. And I want to say nine out of 10 times they need a supplement. So vitamin D, um, would be super important. As far as other deficiencies, it kind of varies based on individual. Okay. So this question about vitamin D um, is coming to us. A uh, person is asking how much vitamin D should an SCI person have daily? Um, obviously you're not advocating necessarily that people start taking supplements, and a, mm -hmm. uh, but how, how, how would they be able to measure if they're getting enough intake of foods that carry vitamin D. Okay. So there's certain foods that have, um, that have vitamin D and it's kind of hard to get enough without the sun. The sun is what synthesizes the inactive form of vitamin D in our body. And so, um, it, it's really hard to actually get your vitamin D needs met without the sun. So if you're like not in the sun, then, um, you need to get your vitamin D checked. A lot of people, if they're in um, in the sun a little bit, you know, then they then they can take a multivitamin. Most multivitamins, if you look at the label on the back, it'll say 100% of cholecalciferol, which is vitamin D3. Um, that's usually sufficient. That's usually 400 units um, in a regular like Kirkland or Centrum multivitamin is usually enough. But you, you really should get checked because if you are deficient, then you're going to need a much higher dose, and the dose is really dependent on the deficiency. Okay. Um, is there a relationship between uh, a diet high in carbs and inflammation? No, I mean, it just depends on the carbs. Okay, so if you're eating a lot of refined carbs, um, baked foods and, and white bread and eating a lot of those, then yes, you're not getting the antioxidants and phytochemicals that whole grains have and, um, and vegetables. But if you're eating a diet that's rich in whole grains and fruits and vegetables, then, then the inflammatory aspect is not even there. Okay. This person is asking, what is your favorite go-to bread? Um, homemade bread <laughs> is my favorite, but I've been enjoying Dave's killer bread. I'll be honest. I've been enjoying the um, I've been so busy lately. I haven't had time to make bread. So I've been getting Dave's killer bread, the green one. I really like that one. And I toast that every morning and I put a layer of peanut butter on it. And right now we have persimmons and I have a, um, a Fuyu persimmon with it and my coffee. That's what my kind of bread is Dave's bread? Dave's killer bread. Dave's killer bread. I'll show you the label. Hold on. I'll be quick. <laughs> there you have it, folks. You're in my house. Right. This is, I keep it frozen. It's really soft, but babes killer bread. <laughs> All right. And this is the um, 21 whole grain and seed um, bread and it's yummy. I love it. Okay. And uh, if that bread is not available everywhere that, you know, people are living, what would be your- at Lucky's. So it should oh, be, it yeah, it's not, I don't, I don't go to Whole Foods. I can't afford okay. Whole Foods, but- All right. <laughs> Um, I do, I do Lucky's and the farmer's market. There's some really good vendors. If you can get to a farmer's market, um, there's one from Santa Cruz. I forget the name of the bakery, but, um, any remember anything with, with whole grain in it, like whole, whole wheat, like anything like that. And look at the fiber. Um, this has a pretty decent amount of fiber in it too, which is another thing. I, I pick things based on fiber content as high as possible. This has five grams of fiber per slice. That's really good. Okay. 
Very good. That's all the questions that have been posed to us. So thank you so much, Shelly. And once again, everyone, the recording of tonight's presentation uh, will be in your inboxes by Saturday morning. And uh, again, thanks to the Reef Foundation for helping us uh, with funding these presentations. So um, have a good night. And uh, I will see you, Shelly, next month. And then uh, in a couple, maybe three weeks, I think Arash is going to be uh, doing his uh, bit on carbs and whole grain. He's going to do some cooking demonstrations of his uh, sort of go-to foods um, that talk about the same subject matter. So we'll look forward to that. So have a good night, everyone. Thanks for uh, spending your evening with us. Uh, we'll see you next uh, time around. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Shelley.